Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. In today's video, I'll be using Paper Rose Studios Dear Isabella collection. I have the two six by six paper pads and also the coordinating die cut images. Here's a look at the Dear Isabella collection. There are 18 double-sided pattern papers, three each of 12 designs. It's a beautiful collection, lots of purple and florals. There are several sheets with cut apart images and sentiments, and I will be using just a few of those. There's a little hint of peach on some of the patterns, and I think it works really well with all the purples. Here's a sheet with lots of image and sentiment cut aparts. They're one and a half by two inches in size. Here's a beautiful pattern with lots of butterflies, and then it repeats itself. Paper Rose always offers so many beautiful and unique collections. And now I'll show you the Dear Isabella Textures collection. There's also 18 double-sided pattern papers, three each of 12 designs. And you can see how the colors work perfectly with the original Dear Isabella collection. I love the beautiful detail with all the textures. Most of the designs look like a wall. Some have brick or paint. I love the variety of colors. We have beautiful greens, purples, and a little bit of orange. And this collection would work well on its own. I'll mostly be using the papers in this collection as backgrounds. Although some of those beautiful textures are really hard to cover up. To coordinate with both of the paper pads, I have the Dear Isabella die cut pack. There are four A5 sheets of pop out die cuts. No fussy cutting required, the die cuts simply pop out. They're attached by just a few small tabs. After I pop them all out, I do take my scissors and trim off that tiny little tab. The colors and designs work perfectly with both of the Dear Isabella paper collections. There are a few sentiments to go along with the beautiful images. Sometimes I'll pick up two of the die cut packs so I can make multiples of the same card, but this time I only have the one pack. So let's go ahead and get started with card design number one. I will be using some card sketches for inspiration. The first sketch is from Sketch Saturday. It's number 666. I selected this lovely floral paper for the background. For that wider panel toward the top, I'm using one of the green texture designs. For the large banner piece with the arrow on the right side, I'm using some purple cardstock, and I'll be layering the card on the same purple cardstock color. To cut the arrow, I simply used my scissors. At the bottom of the green panel, the card sketch indicates a stitched line. I cut a narrow strip of purple cardstock that has a pearlescent finish and I'll put a little bit of glue on the back side to adhere it in place. I did cut that strip just a little bit wider, so I flipped over my panel, used my scissors to trim off the extra. Now I'll put adhesive on the back of the pattern paper piece and layer it on purple cardstock. Put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. For the sentiment on this card, I'm using one of the image sentiment cut aparts. This is Thinking of You, and it has a beautiful floral design above and below it. I'll layer it on the same purple cardstock. Before adhering it in place, I did cut a very narrow strip of scrap cardstock and adhered it at the bottom. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere it on top of the purple arrow banner piece. The card sketch also indicates a bow, and I used one of Paper Rose's bow die cut pieces. This is from their tiny bow set. It's one of my favorites. I'll put glue on the back and adhere it on the left side of the card. For embellishments, I'm using some sequins from Spellbinders. The color matches beautifully with the pattern paper. I'll put one underneath the bow on the left side and two in the upper right hand corner. I am using an embellishment wand to pick up the sequins, adding just a small drop of Barely Art glue and pressing them in place. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. 
For card design number two, the card sketch is from MFT. This is number 328. This is a fun card sketch with lots of layers, and I add additional layers with all those cardstock pieces. I selected this fun green and brown pattern paper for the background, although most of it will be covered up. For the medium-sized rectangle, I'm using one of the texture pattern papers. For the smaller rectangle, I have a pattern with lots of smaller images. There's birds and butterflies, a stack of book, keys. I'm layering everything on some dark brown cardstock. For the diagonal strip that goes across the card, I'm using the same dark brown cardstock. I had first attached the image piece onto the texture pattern paper, then I remembered I wanted that diagonal strip to go directly behind the image piece. Luckily, I was able to easily remove it. I put just a tiny bit of adhesive behind the diagonal strip, place it across my card, then I'll flip it over, use my scissors to trim off the extra. Because I have all those different layers, I'm adding a couple of cardstock and pattern paper pieces on the very right and left side of that diagonal strip. And that will help it stay nice and level so the very end of that brown strip doesn't dip down. Once I have the scrap pieces in place, I'll put glue on the back of the diagonal strip and adhere it in place, making sure both sides are still lined up nicely. The brown cardstock I'm using is fairly thick, so before adding the image pattern paper piece, I'll put a scrap piece of cardstock above and below that diagonal strip. Then I'll adhere it in place. I'll put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. I'll be adding the sentiment Hugs and Kisses, and this is a cut apart from Paper Roses Mediterranean Vibes Collection. On the back side of the 12 by 12 cover sheet were lots of sentiments. I've already done a video using that collection, but I still have lots of the sentiments left over, and some of the colors match perfectly with the Dear Isabella collection. I put double-sided adhesive tape on the back side of the sentiment, cut the right side at an angle, and adhered it in the lower left-hand corner. I'll add one of the die cut images, this butterfly, and I'm putting glue just underneath the body so the wings can still lift up. For a final finishing touch, I'm adding two small circle die cuts in the upper right hand corner, and I use the same brown cardstock. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. For card design number three, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. It's number 587. For the background of my card, I have some white shimmer cardstock, and I embossed it using Paper Rose's Baby Blue Embossing Folder. I also cut it out using a stitched rectangle die. I'll put adhesive on the back and layer it on some purple cardstock. The purple cardstock has a pearlescent side and also a matte side. For this card, I am using the matte side. I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. For the three circles, I selected three different pattern papers. Two of the patterns are from the Dear Isabella collection and the other is from the Textures collection. I cut them out using a stitch circle die. I'll put glue on the back and adhere all three of the circles in place following the design of the card sketch. Next, I'll add a leafy branch die cut and this is Paper Rose's Leaf Outline Die. I use the same purple cardstock, but this time I have the pearlescent side showing. I'll add glue on the back side and adhere it on top of the three circles. The cardstock color is almost the same color as the textured circle in the upper right hand corner, but it does stand out since it has that pearlescent finish. I'll place an acrylic block on top for some added weight while the glue dries. For a sentiment, I'm adding the word thank you, and this is from Paper Rose's Big Sentiments 1.0 Sentiment Cut Apart Pack. I love having these on hand. Super easy to add to a card without doing any stamping. And their sentiment packs come with tons and tons of sentiments. Before adhering it in place, I will add some scrap cardstock and pattern paper on the right side of the sentiment. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere it to my card. 
After placing it down, I did realize I should put a cardstock piece on the left side as well. Otherwise, there'll be a noticeable bump from the stem of the branch. Luckily, the glue hadn't dried yet, so I was able to peel up the sentiment and tuck in that cardstock scrap. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. The other card also has the thank you sentiment, just in a different font. For card design number four, I'm using pattern paper for the background that looks like a close-up of a very intricate and detailed door. I love the design. I trimmed down this piece to three and three-fourths of an inch by five inches, and I'm layering it on some dark brown cardstock. The cardstock layer is an additional eighth of an inch. Then I'll layer that panel on some white pearlescent cardstock. Put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. At the bottom of the card, I'm adding a narrow brown cardstock strip. This is five eighths of an inch by four inches. I have some double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. I'll remove the release paper and adhere it in place. So just the very right and left side is going off the end of that wooden panel. As a little extra detail. I'll be adding one of the die cut images, a teacup with some pretty flowers around it, and I'll be adhering it onto a stitch circle die cut from Vellum. I did trim off the very bottom of the circle, so I have a semicircle instead. I'll first adhere the die cut image onto the vellum, then I'll flip over the circle, put adhesive just on the back side where the die cut piece is, and adhere it on top of that brown strip. I also added a sweet little bird die cut piece, and it's sitting on the edge of the teacup. For a sentiment, I'm adding just for you, and this is another cut apart from the Mediterranean Vibes collection. I cut the left side at an angle. Before adhering it in place, I did put a narrow scrap cardstock piece just on the very bottom. Then I'll adhere it in the lower left-hand corner. For a final finishing touch, I'm adding some sequins. These are from Spellbinders. I'll put two in the upper right-hand corner and three around the sentiment in the lower left-hand corner. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. The other card features different die-cut images and sentiment, but still follows the same card design. For card design number five, the card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 585. I thought this looked like a really fun sketch with all those narrow strips going across the background. I think it would be fun to use five different pattern papers, but for my card, I'm using just one pattern paper, a very soft purple that has a watercolor look to it. The narrow strips are three and a half inches by three fourths of an inch. I'll adhere the strip in the center first, and I am following the grid design on my mat to try to get that piece nice and centered. Then I'll tilt up my card to make sure I get it nice and straight. Then I'll add the other pieces, trying to leave equal distance between each of them. I am leaving a wider margin at the bottom and top of the card, as indicated on the card sketch. The white cardstock I'm using for the background has a shimmer finish. I'll flip it over, add adhesive on the back, and layer it on some purple pearlescent cardstock. This is the same cardstock I've been using. This time I have the pearlescent side showing. The cardstock is by Basil. It's their flirty color. I'll put ATG tape on the back and add my card front onto a card base. This card will be featuring one of the larger floral die cut pieces. I'll first adhere it onto a stitch circle die cut that I cut out of vellum. Once I've adhered the die cut piece, I'll flip over the circle, add glue on the back side, just in the area where that die cut piece is. Then I'll adhere it to my card. For a sentiment, I'm adding thank you. And this is another cut apart from the same sentiment pack. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a small banner in the upper right hand corner. I'll first cut a fishtail on the bottom, then on the right side, I'll cut it slightly in at an angle, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side, then I'll put a little bit of glue on the back and adhere it in place. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. For card design number six, the card sketch is from MFT. This is number 646. 
I selected this lovely purple textured paper for the background. The detail is amazing, so I really don't want to cover most of that paper up. I think this card sketch is perfect. I'll still be able to add several different pattern paper pieces, but you'll also see that gorgeous background. I used a stitch square die to cut out the three pattern paper pieces, and I'll adhere them in place using some glue. But first, I'll layer the background piece on some dark purple cardstock. Using the same cardstock color, I cut two narrow strips, and I did put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back of those narrow strips. Now I'll put glue on the back of the stitch square die cuts, starting with the brick design, then the watercolor light purple, and finally the floral pattern. I was trying to decide which direction was up with this lovely floral. Not sure it really matters. For a sentiment, I'll be adding Thinking of You. This is from another sentiment pack by Paper Rose. It's their black and white sentiments. It includes a really nice variety of sentiments that you can use year round. Before adhering the sentiment, I will put a scrap of pattern paper just on the right side where it goes off of the stitch square die cut. Then I'll adhere it in place. I'm trying to make sure I got the sentiment nice and straight. It's the advantage of using glue. You have that little bit of wiggle room to adjust everything. Next, I'll add one of the butterfly die cut images and I am popping it up using some foam dimension. I'll remove the release paper and adhere it above the sentiment on the left side. For a final finishing touch, I'll cut a small banner from the same dark purple cardstock and adhere it in the upper left hand corner. And I'm cutting it the same that I did on the previous card. I love the whimsical look of this banner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. I really like how this card turned out. The background paper is so beautiful. Now moving on to card design number seven. The card sketch is from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 586. And this is a very simple card design. I'll be featuring this beautiful floral image. And this is a pattern that took up most of the six by six sheet. I'll round the right corners of the floral pattern paper. For the background, I'm using another purple textured pattern. And on the very left side, I'm adding a narrow strip of the orange brick pattern paper. Now on the sketch, it does have that narrow strip go on top, but I didn't wanna cover up any more of that floral design, so I am adhering that narrow strip underneath. And I also cut it at 3 fourths of an inch instead of the 1 and 1 eighth of an inch as indicated on the card sketch. I layered the background on some dark purple cardstock, put my card front onto a card base, leaving eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For a sentiment, I'm adding another cut apart, this time get well soon. And I did put a small scrap piece of pattern paper on the very right side before adhering it in place. Now here's another look at the 14 cards I made using Paper Row Studios Dear Isabella collection. I use the original 6x6 paper collection and also the Dear Isabella Textures collection along with the coordinating die cut pack. The colors and designs are absolutely beautiful. If you're a fan of purple, this may be the collection for you. If you are interested in any of the products I use in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. Paper Rose is located in Australia and they ship their products internationally, but you can also purchase them here in the US and I have links for both locations in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.